Hello world, the prolific state-sponsored North Korean hacker group Lazarus is back at it again with a new hack. This time, instead of stealing money for the North Korean regime, they're switching tactics and engaging in corporate cyber espionage. They've managed to hack into a Russian defense firm via Microsoft Word. But how did this go down and what were they hoping to grab? This story has a bit of a funny twist. That's coming up in this video where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. Lazarus, otherwise known as APT38, is a North Korean hacker group known for a variety of high-profile hacks from the Sony Pictures hack of 2014 through to WannaCry itself. I recently made a video on how members of this group were charged by the US for $1 billion, which I'll link at the end of the video. In their latest and possibly most ambitious hack, they targeted defense companies, their initial attack vector being spear phishing. Normal phishing is when criminals send en masse emails impersonating someone with the intention of convincing you to send them money. For example, I'm sure we've all received an email claiming we're a long lost relative of some Nigerian prince. All you need to do to claim your trillion dollar inheritance is to send over $200 via Western Union. Spear phishing is like normal phishing, but instead of copy pasting the same email, the emails are instead very targeted. Hackers will identify a small set of victims and personally craft each email in a bid to make them as believable as possible. According to the Kaspersky report, the hackers composed the emails to make it look like they were relaying vital COVID updates from another department within the same organization, though embedded within the emails was a malicious Microsoft Word document. The document contained within it malevolent macros. A macro in Word is essentially just extra code contained within a document which automates certain tasks, such as for fancy formatting. For the most part, macros are really pretty boring, though they can be leveraged to run cursed code, which is why Word has them disabled by default. When the victim tried opening the documents, they were presented with this problem. The macros wouldn't run. Discombobulated, they responded to the email, explaining the issue. Unaware that they were essentially pointing out to North Korean hackers that their malicious code didn't run and asking them to fix it. The attackers responded with another email explaining how to enable macros so the malicious code would work. After a brief back and forth, the attacker eventually realized that the tutorial they sent was for a different version of Microsoft Word than the victim had installed. After some more to and fro, the victim finally managed to enable macros and the malicious code ran. Frustratingly, we don't know what the target company was here. Kaspersky has kept this confidential. All we know is that the firm communicated in Russian, so on the balance of probability, it was likely a Russian company. After successfully running the macro, malware was deployed called ThreatNeedle. ThreatNeedle was used to carry out initial reconnaissance and deploy yet more malware for lateral movement within the victim's computer system. Lateral movement in this context just refers to gaining further access and moving deeper within the victim network after the initial breach in the search of sensitive data to steal. The hackers used an open source tool called Responder to harvest credentials from the victim PC. The infiltrators then used these grabbed creds to gain access to other computers and eventually managed to compromise a computer used by system administrators. From there, they managed to find their way into a restricted network. It's unclear exactly what was stored on this restricted network, but it was valuable enough to warrant isolating it from the internet and from the main corporate network, ironically for security reasons. It's suggested in the reports that the main aim of this hack was to steal intellectual property. Given the compromised company is defense related, one can only imagine what the target of this hack was. Once the hackers had found something worth stealing, they reconfigured the company's router, creating a tunnel to exfiltrate files out of that restricted network. By all accounts, it looks like the hackers were successful. After grabbing what they came for, the crooks started removing all traces of their activity from the victim computers, setting up scripts to automatically delete log files. The Casper Kaspersky reports details how through this investigation, they managed to find connections to other hacks thought to be the work of North Korea's Lazarus Group. There's a lot of overlap here in the tools and scripts utilized in this hack compared to other recent hacks. This helps tie all of these different campaigns together and point the finger at Lazarus. Lazarus are also said to be behind other major hacks such as WannaCry and a billion dollar bank heist. In a recent video I made, which you should totally go and watch, I discussed those hacks and the United States' effort to bring the elusive group to justice. Speaking of things you should totally check out, Maltronics.com is a store I run where you can find an array of super cool pen testing products. You can get 10% off with code Satonic, and I have something new coming to Maltronics this weekend, though if you follow me on Instagram, you'll already know about it. 
Make sure to sign up to the mailing list and I'll let you know as soon as the new gadget goes live. If you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure to let me know down in those comments. Might as well hit like and subscribe whilst you're down there. Also, for behind the scenes footage, do follow me on Instagram. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.